Welcome to a special edition of Let's Talk Tobago. As we get ready to welcome 2019, we have a look at some of our most memorable and exciting stories of 2018. We're here at Mount Irvin today, and while we review this year's past stories, we're also going to take you on a tour of the Mount Irvin Bay Resort. So let's begin with the headlines as we show you what's to come in our review. This year, students of the Scarborough Roman Catholic Primary School began the September school term in a brand new school building. The Unemployment Relief Program enhanced the skills of their employees, new street lights were installed at French Fort, and the Speyside Beach facility got the necessary upgrades needed to function at its best. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. The Mount Irvin Bay Resort is the perfect mix from wide open spaces and attention to the finest detail, the resort combines all the amenities of world-class accommodation with the unique charm of the Caribbean. Now, unemployment relief workers, URP, have helped to develop the island of Tobago in many meaningful ways. And this year, policymakers sought to enhance their skills to make the workers even more productive. Let's take a look. More than 1,500 employees make up the Unemployment Relief Program, URP. They carry out various agricultural, environmental, and construction projects. To make the program more viable, the workers now have to go through a verification process. It's the first step in the reorganization of the program. The aim is to provide courses that help workers develop their vocational talents. Part of the verification process, they will be um, identifying what area, what skill areas they would be interested in, including the revenue generating areas. So if you want to be a mason, carpenter, so on. And so we're having programs, we're partnering with the Division of Education with the capacity building program that they have there, so that workers will be certified for the first time. Workers of the URP program will be certified when they are now part of the program, so that we will be now producing certified masons, joiners, and so on, right here in the URP program. The Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment will partner with other units within the Assembly. They will provide workers with business skills so that they can become more marketable. We are also looking at providing other soft skills for them um, in terms of managing the workspace, interfacing with, with, um, with your employer, writing resumes, all of financial planning. So all of these things they will be in, um, exposed to. We also will be partnering with the BDU to see what other opportunities that there will be for these workers. So there will be a wider range of opportunities for URP workers now under this revised policy that we have for the, Euro the Unemployment Relief Program. But it won't be all about making money. The Secretary says employees will also be providing skilled labor for those who can't afford it. We are now about to enter into an arrangement with the Self-Help Commission so that when persons engage the Self-Help Commission for material, we will pro um, provide um, labor through URP so that the residents of Tobago are able to directly benefit, especially those most in need. Employees work primarily during the morning. The changes that are coming mean that they'll have more skills so that they can produce more work. It's therefore expected that the restructuring exercise should improve the productivity and professionalism of workers within the program. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Sitting on 154 acres, the land space on which the resort occupies was once a sugar and coconut plantation. Now it's an elegant resort that's adjacent to one of Tobago's 18-hole championship golf course. So teachers now have a place to call home as the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy opened its Teachers Professional Development Center in 2018. Have a look. 
It is said that education is the most powerful weapon which can use to change the world. And right here in Tobago, the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy is doing its part to boost and strengthen the education system. Located in the village of Jandal, the Tobago Professional Teacher Center was recently opened. This new center aims to further develop and train teachers on the island. Usually in education, we spend a lot of time ensuring that our students are catered for in all areas. We have been engaging in professional development for teachers and continuous professional development. But many times we have to outsource a venue. We have to go seek accommodation elsewhere. But today we are entering a new threshold where teachers and members of the teaching fraternity here in Tobago will now have a space to claim and to call their own. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imagination, and instill a love for learning. Avenues such as this new initiative will aid in the empowerment of teachers today as they equip and prepare our leaders for tomorrow. We really wanted this center organized, or we want it to be a place where teachers will be enhanced and enriched in terms of the quality of delivery of education to schools on the island. We're looking at curriculum, instruction, and delivery. And at the center, you'll be able to come here whenever you want. We're going to schedule you to get assistance, to get help, to get support, to get ideas, to get strategies for teaching and learning mainly. So that in, in the end of it, our students will benefit. Our students will perform at a higher level. Chief Secretary and the Secretary of Education, Innovation and Energy, Kelvin Charles says, he supports initiatives such as these because he believes they assist in transforming the education landscape, especially at this time. We felt that the time had come when we needed to provide additional opportunities for our teachers to move from good to great. We felt that notwithstanding training, at the level of the university, since education really has to do with lifelong learning, and since there are always new challenges, and since there is innovation, we always have to search for best practices. And therefore, opportunities must be given for teachers to engage in activities outside of university, where they can together reason, think, um, analyze, synthesize, experiment, problem solve. And that is why we are here today, to mark the official opening or the launch of our Teachers Professional Center. This is the first center of its kind on the island. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Mount Irvin Bay Resort's accommodations are ideal for unwinding. You can lay back and relax in the luxury of a room or suite, all of which are air-conditioned with private bathrooms and balconies. Now, in keeping with accommodation, students of the Scarborough Roman Catholic Primary School entered into a brand new compound at the beginning of the school year. They've waited a while for this, but the school was finally commissioned in September. Have a look. A new school year has begun. For students and the teachers of the Scarborough Roman Catholic Primary School, it means a brand new school compound, now located at Smithfield, Scarborough. The new school was recently commissioned, and the teachers and students are pleased that they are now all in one place that's spacious and safe. The pupils are particularly happy with their new school. We say thanks for our new school, so majestic, and sad. Many people worked hard for us to reach to this grand occasion. We say thanks and give you a standing ovation. I think it's good 
and I want God to bless it. I feel happy, excited that we finally get a new school. I think that it's very big, it's nice and colorful, and it's just wow. Originally located in Bacolet, the RC school opened its doors in the 1940s. Over the decades, it has produced a long list of outstanding graduates in various fields. They include attorney Martin George, athlete Simoy Hackett, and businessman George Leacock. Acting Scarborough RC principal Patricia Waif says the new environment will help the administration continue to produce well-rounded students. This new building provides a much improved learning environment for both our teachers and the students. Our teachers and students are excited to move in. We are all well aware of the interaction between physical spaces and the learning environment. It must also be noted that modern facilities improve not only the school's physical environment, but also its learning culture. Scarborough RC is one of the top performing primary schools on the island. It now features 27 classrooms, along with a computer room, science lab, cafeteria, small chapel, and library. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles, who's also the Secretary of Education, Innovation, and Energy, expects these facilities to serve as motivation for greater achievements. We are determined to make all our school environments comfortable and safe for staff, students, and all stakeholders. There is no question, however, that this school building is one of the more attractive primary educational spaces in Tobago, Trinidad, the Caribbean, and the world. As Scarborough RC opened the doors to its current location, the new Smithfield Connector Road was also commissioned. It will allow easier access to and from the school. It's expected that the new school will help staff and students continue to excel in academics, culture, and sport. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. New streets light for residents at French Fort. That story is up next right after these messages. Stay with us. You can start your morning to write at the Mount Irvin Bay Resort with a full Caribbean breakfast at the on-site open-air sugar mill restaurant. Or you can opt for room service. The choice is always yours. Residents of James Avenue French Fort got a bright start at the beginning of this year when new street lights were installed. For more than 20 years, the residents of James Avenue French Fort have been without street lights. But things are now looking brighter with the installation of nine streetlights in the community. Area Representative and Secretary of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, Mrs. Marcelin Melville-Jack, says she's happy to be able to bring some relief to the people of her district. This afternoon we are gathered here at James Avenue with the residents of French Fort to celebrate with them the installation of street lights, something that they have been clamoring for for years, and their dream has now become a reality. The community also played a role in getting the street lights. The Calder Hall Improvement Committee and Restorer of the Breach Community Church were the two community groups that got on board with the project. Tobago businesses also contributed, including Parks International Limited, the number one hardware, Protran 97 Limited, Warner's Hardware, Wayne Phillip Plumbing Services, and Nasvik Contractors. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles says initiatives like these are to be commended. He says it's great when everyone gets involved in improving their communities, instead of waiting on the THA for help. We are about enhancing delivery mm -hmm. and strengthening partnerships so that the activity today is in fact a demonstration of that theme because we are ensuring through the representative that a particular service required by the community is now available to the community, but more importantly, at no cost to the THA. 
and that was because the partnership model that we have been um, talking about is what would have been used as the basis mm -hmm. for ensuring its uh, realization. And therefore, I take this opportunity to congratulate all those groups and individuals who would have contributed to this. But it also says to the rest of uh, Tobago that where there is a will, a there way. is a way. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it begins to give expression to the new paradigm that one does not have to wait on the Tobago House of Assembly to get things done. The presence of streetlights means more community activities. Residents say they're grateful for the newly erected lights. On behalf of um, French Fort and, and, and the community that are living down here, we give thanks to the chief, sir, and the PM, well, you know I always buy a place. <laughs> For safety, lights, and streets. So today we give thanks and praise to the street. I lived here for 20 years, right? And this comment was a real problem now. But here, me, here, me. Believe me, I'm a daughter who goes to school with lamp and can't you see. But I'm so glad you all came and solved that problem. <laughs> Thank you all very much. This project is an example of what can be achieved through community effort and partnership. I am Avian Parks for Let's Talk Tobago. The Sugar Mill Restaurant also offers a wide range of local and international fare for lunch and dinner. But if you're feeling more casual, you can lounge and indulge at the pool bar or the golf club bar. Now in 2018, the Tobago House of Assembly also reassured workers that their jobs are secure. More details in this report. No worker of the Unemployment Relief Program or URP will be sent home. That's the assurance of the Secretary of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, Councillor Kwesi Devines. Changes have been made to get more out of the program. Councillor Devines says there's no need for workers to worry. We are not cutting any workers. We understand and the Assembly has made all attempts and the Chief Secretary would have sent, said it on many occasions that we are trying to maintain employment levels as far as possible. Mr. Devine says, however, that there are workers of the program who have additional employment within the Tobago House of Assembly. He says they will have to decide which department they will remain with. Those persons will have to make a choice. Which job do we want to keep? And the, well, it's ongoing, the process is ongoing, as I said. We've identified some persons so far. The administrator is actually collaborating with his colleagues. And once we have the final figure, we will make that figure available to you all. The division has made fundamental changes to the URP. This includes partnering with the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor. Capacity building in the program is now a major focus. These workers will have submitted their names, qualifications, and they are now being uploaded to the Labor Exchange Bureau that is being hosted by the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor. Beyond that, we will be hosting a series of training sessions in agro-processing because we recognize that there's an opportunity for agricultural development. The activities of the program will resume on March 1st. At Mount Irvin Bay Resort, you will have endless options for relaxation. You can take a break and cool off in the freshwater swimming pool or stroll down to the Mount Irvin Beach where the water is calm and perfect for bathing. Kane and Bonacord residents now have a spacious and comfortable environment to host social activities. The multi-purpose centre was enhanced to meet the needs of this growing community. Here's more. Members of the CNB Ballroom Dancers group delighting the audience with their skills at the commissioning of the Canaan Bonacord Multipurpose Facility. The official opening of the Multipurpose Center marked the completion of upgrades and expansion of a space where community members can now hold meetings and advance themselves in various vocational skills programs. President of the Canaan Bonacord Village Council, Wade David, says that members have already started making use of their new space. I'm proud to say that our facility has been used to host at least two dance classes. There have been classes in leather crafting, classes in wine making, bottle designing, 
that members of our community have utilized and they have come on board with that spirit of, of wanting to learn and to share with one another and not only that but to become entrepreneurs. The facility is now equipped with washroom facilities, a computer room, an office area and a kitchen in anticipation of the other activities and programs that will be available in the future. Secretary of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, Marcelin Melville-Jack, says that focus should be placed on guiding more young people into taking up responsibilities in the affairs of the community. This facility should be used to love the young people in your community so much that they are empowered to become more than they even believe that they can be. Give them the opportunities to lead. The upgrades to the facility have been done at approximately $860,000 by the THE. Users of the facility have been urged to turn their skills into viable income earning avenues so that the investment will be worthwhile. We are saying that whatever skills and talents, latent as they may be, that reside in us, we must exploit those skills and talents. We must develop those skills and talents so that they work for us in ways that can allow us to earn a living. Members of the village council have furnished the centre with close to 100 chairs. They have also taken the responsibility of paying for the utilities and maintaining the facility's surroundings. It is expected that the close collaboration between the village council and the assembly will continue to produce positive outcomes. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The Speyside Beach facility was upgraded this year. We give you all the highlights when we return. Stay with us. They say it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters the most. And in the face of disaster, chaos, and panic, it is the Tobago Emergency Management Agency's comprehensive emergency response plans that will matter most to Tobago. This agency's modernized approach to emergency management is driven by technology, powered by networking, focused on community resilience, open to partnering, enhanced through training, and led by a highly competent and dedicated staff. This has positioned them as one of the premier disaster management agencies in the region and earned them Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard Certification. Congrats, TEMA, Tobago Emergency Management Agency. Welcome back. I'm Davia Chambers and we are at the Mount Irvin Bay Resort. Water sporting activities are popular here as the beach has reefs on both ends of the bay, making it one of the best snorkeling spots in Tobago. Now we saw beach facilities around the island upgraded this year and Speyside was the first stop. We took the journey to bring you this story. As part of the ongoing improvement of beach facilities in Tobago, the Speyside Beach facility has been refurbished to improve the visitor experience on the island. We felt that it was definitely necessary to upgrade the facility to ensure that it continues to offer service to the patrons at the facility. It had a lot of work on the building to do. We had was to um, do over all the tile work on the building and we had what to do over the roof as well, the outer parts and the inner part of the roof. Along with electrical upgrades and the extension of the concessionaire's area, patrons are able to enjoy a safer and more spacious facility. Now that the facility has been refurbished, it offers the community another venue in which to have a number of different activities. It lends support to activities such as the Fisherman's Festival and the Speyside Jazz Experience. The upcoming Tobago Jazz Experience in the East will also provide economic benefits. Speyside resident Miss Christine Scipio will operate the newly renovated restaurant and bar. She tells us about her plans for the operations. The first thing I have to do is get the license, the bar license in order. So even if I don't get the full license, I can get an occasional license for the jazz festival and have things rolling from there.
The Spaceside Beach facility has been refurbished at a cost of $700,000 and is now open for business. From the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, I'm Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. If you're looking to escape your busy schedule this coming New Year, staying at the Mount Irvin Bay Resort is a must. There's a fabulous sense of tranquility which offers the perfect environment to relax and recharge. Now, the Methodist Church celebrated a big milestone in 2018, 200 years in existence. To commemorate this occasion, all the Methodist churches gathered at the Mount St. George Methodist Church for the official launch of the celebration themed Celebrating 200 Years of Methodist Heritage, Taking Flight in Transforming Lives. Here's more. The Methodist Church is celebrating a big milestone in 2018. To commemorate this occasion, all the Methodist churches gathered at the Mount St. George Methodist Church for the official launch of the celebration theme, celebrating 200 years of Methodist heritage, taking flight in transforming lives. The Methodists have a proud heritage of social contributions. That the Methodist Church is not just another denomination, it is really a community being transformed by the very essence of these individuals living normal lives in the land. And I say normal lives because persons like your great-grandmother and father and my great-grandmother and father, without little education, we just had this faith, this strong faith in God that made them want to love people, that made them want to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is really what, for me, is, is, is most significant about the Methodists celebrating 200 years at this time. The church is for people of all ages, and one young member says he's proud to be a part of the Methodist movement, which allows him to serve God freely. Well, I have been a Methodist for all my life. I actually went to a Methodist school. I grew up right here in the community of Mount St. George. I went to the Mount St. George Methodist School. I worship right here in the Mount St. George Methodist Church. If I was to describe it, I would say that it has allowed me um, what I would call freedom to embrace my spirituality without any rigid um, stipulation, without anything that I have to do or without conforming to a must have to bound to way of life. It's a very, very simple way for me to embrace my spirituality. And I say spirituality, meaning understanding that there is a higher power um, and not just understanding a higher power, but this higher power is responsible for the creation of everything. In keeping with Tobago's culture, the launch included a speech band presentation highlighting the history of the Methodist faith here in Tobago. Now we school the government take over because for maintaining them was plenty pressure. Through the years we produce many a scholar. I forgot our Methodist school, it was a great honor. I must tell all you. This one about Reverend Cato, when he was superintendent minister here in Tobago. He was one who helped for clear the land, upon which the Bonacord Methodist Church now stand. Dressed in his rubber boots and broad belt round his waist, he would walk for hours, clearing and cleaning the place. He was like nervous, kind of, but I was so excited that I did it. Well, at first I was nervous and I was scared, and then when, I, when it became my turn, I was excited to do it. Methodist is a great religion, and I will like to be part of it. As part of the celebrations, there is a schedule for events and activities to be hosted by the church throughout the year. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. That's it for us today and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program. Be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more information on the Mount Irvin Bay Resort, you can contact 
8871 or visit their website at www.mountirvin.com. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and a very productive week. Thank you.